Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. Recently, with the gradual easing of the lockdown in Montreal, I have had more opportunities to meet some of my students in my backyard. After observing their practice, I realized that most of them did not practice enough physically. Of course, I can't really blame them. The lockdown has adversely affected most of our lives. So, such a situation is to be expected. But at the same time, I also noticed a common issue in their practice. Their stepping was a lot less stable than before. By the term less stable stepping, I do not mean their movement were clumsy or that they were constantly tripping over their own two feet. Rather, what I implied was their martial stepping was not sufficiently rooted. I have been fortunate enough that there has never been a time in my martial learning days where I have not been supervised by a teacher. I always had my grandfather, my uncle, or other teachers watching over my practice. As a result, any of my mistakes in practice were caught and rectified early on itself. Because of this, my practice did not suffer from any chronic mistakes. However, I am aware that it was indeed a privilege and most people may not be able to enjoy it. So, that is why every once in a while, as a student, you should ask your teacher to point out your mistakes in practice. Some martial basics such as stepping, stance, or even basic routines serve as important foundations in training. They should be regularly reviewed and corrected whenever necessary, so that common mistakes don't creep into the rest of your practice. With that in mind, Today's video will focus on Luo Di Sheng Gen, a very important concept in martial stepping practice. Topics covered in today's video include first, Gen Ben in Chinese culture, second, Gen in martial art, third, common principles of Gen, fourth, common mistakes in Gen practice, fifth, demonstration, and uh, 6 takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1. The concept of Genben in Chinese culture. Language is a major part of any culture. Analyze of the Chinese language or Han Yu, especially the rating system, is an effective way to understand Chinese culture. When I was a child, my family taught me calligraphy. Especially during high school, my father had a couple of calligraphy teachers tutor me for further improvement. In the Chinese syllabary, there are different strategies for creating characters. The oldest method used in creating characters is pictograms, which can be expressed very well through calligraphy. So, after years of study, I am now used to paying attention to detail on the evolution of a character. Its meaning, since the rating system is a constantly evolving system and the meanings can change with time. It is fun to not only study how to write a beautiful character with a pen, but it is also an interesting experience to know the real meaning of a character based on historical context. If you are learning the Chinese language, I highly recommend you to spend some time understanding the history of the Chinese writing system so that you will gain an in-depth understanding of uh, Chinese culture. Now, let's come back to the term 根本. 
Genben was originally used to describe the structure of a tree. Gen means root, Wen means stem. However, when put together, Genben does not describe a tree, but instead means qualities like foundational, original, essential, fundamental, and so on, depending on the context. We can notice that in the Chinese language, roots and stem are considered key part of a character. This practice of using gen and, and ben or root and stem later found its way into describing concepts, actions, and subjects. For example, traditional Chinese medicine has an important principle, zhi bing qiu ben, or treatment should focus on the principal cause of a disease. In Chinese philosophy, gen ben means the origin of the universe, which has been a widely debated topic for thousands of years. To summarize, gen ben in Chinese culture is used to express an important concept but originated from two nouns including root and stem of a tree. Topic 2. The concept of a gen in martial art. Now, I'd like to talk about the concept of a gen or root in martial art practice. Basically, gen has two meanings. One is the fundamental foundation or basis. The other is the rooting, which is the main focus of today's video. In a prior video titled Internal Style Concepts Number 10, Methodologies Continued from calligraphy to martial art. I mentioned that the fundamental differences in the aesthetic standard of expression of a physical movement between the Chinese and the Western approaches is that the Chinese aesthetic standard uses a pyramidal approach, while the Western aesthetic standard uses an inverted pyramidal approach. If you have not watched that video yet, I recommend you watch it first and then resume this video. The link is in the description. So, like any other style, the traditional Chinese martial arts, especially the internal styles, really emphasize the concept of gen or routine. I have to say that the routine is the foundation of the traditional Chinese pyramidal approach, not just with respect to the physical structure but more importantly with respect to the flow and thinking of energy. A mere pyramidal approach devoid of routine is not the traditional approach. For example, if you observe a modern Wushu demonstration, even though it is named as the Chinese style, their approach is nowhere close to a pyramidal approach in terms of energy flow. Instead, what you see is an inverted pyramidal approach. If you have studied the history of a modern Wushu practice, you, you will see that what I mean. As a martial artist, I evaluate any practice not merely by its name but on its intrinsic energy and effort expressed through its movements. So, what exactly is routine in martial context? Many martial artists of the current generation as well as some belonging to prior generations believed routine to be the practice of a strong and stable stance. Well, I think this def definition is good but not enough. My approach is to elevate this concept from the physical level to an energetic level, since the advanced practice of any style focuses on its energy. So, 
My interpretation of 根本 is to treat the body as the stem and the and the downward energy as the rooting. Rooting is the downward energy movement or the sinking feeling, not merely the physical aspect such as stance. Let me be clear. I'm not saying that other people were wrong in their definition of rooting. Rather, what I'm saying here is that we should go beyond the physical level and reach an energetic level, which of course is abstract, but is a true reflection of the fundamental principle of the word rooting, according to the original Chinese language. Now, let's focus on the term in the title of this video. There are four characters in this proverb. Luo means landing, Di means ground, Sheng means to generate or create, and Gen means root. Put together, it can be translated to landing on the ground like rooting into the ground. Luo Di Sheng Gen is a very popular martial proverb used to express the importance of a rooting in martial practice. Therefore, I would like to re-emphasize here that rooting is a key concept in most of the traditional Chinese styles. The pyramidal approach is based on the concept and the practice of a rooting which is an important guiding principle of Chinese martial arts, especially the internal styles. Topic 3. Common Principles of Gen It is very hard to detail such an important topic in a short video format, so I'd like to introduce some of the most important principles on this topic using proverbs. First, 不法轻且稳 Stepping should be light but stable. It sounds counterintuitive when you first hear it. But think about it. Lightness requires better stepping control, while stability requires maintaining a balance of strength, neither too hard nor too soft. The excessive hardness makes you stiff, the excessive softness makes you sloppy and unstable. Again, correct stepping requires timing, angle, the balance of the strength and experience, which are all the result of long-term practice. By the way, you should pay special attention to Tai Chi stepping. Many people get confused by the term Ta Bu Ru Mao Xing, or Step Like a Cat, which emphasized the importance of lightness. But another proverb should be used in conjunction with it Luo Di Ru Sheng Gen, landing on the ground like rooting yourself into the ground. Both proverbs are required for a complete understanding of the stepping practice in Tai Chi. Second, stable stand relies on the strength of the leg. Remember this, you simply cannot generate strong power on your feet without practicing the strength of the legs. Actually, the rooting energy of the feet really depends on the structure and the strength of the legs. In the traditional martial art practice, we use the term san jie or three section to express the relationship between hips, knees, and feet. I have a video titled Knees Contracting Xing Yi Bagua Tai Chi Number 4, in which I introduced the concept of san jie or three sections, which can be used to explain the power of the feet in practice as well. The link is in the description. Long story short, in the internal styles, you cannot skip leg day because every day is a leg day. We all know that the pushing motion of the feet is executed by the hips through the knees. Therefore, the rooting practice relies on the hips as well. So, 
In practice, you should focus on the energy transfer between the hips, the knees, and the feet. It will help you improve your routine practice. 3. There are two physical states in martial art practice. First is the static state, which involves stance practice. The other is the dynamic state, which involves movement. Routing should be practiced not only in a static state, but also in a dynamic state. Routing is an important concept and practice, applied usually in a dynamic situation. So, you should be careful to not misperceive the concept of a routing as being limited to stance practice. More importantly, you should improve your routine practice in a dynamic state or dynamic routine in other words. This is the part that many people get confused about. You should pay attention to movements involving weight shifting with respect to the energy transfer between your hip, knees, and the feet in order to improve your dynamic routine practice. There are many other principles as well, but in the interest of time, I have only introduced three of the most important ones today. To summarize, please pay attention to the structure of your legs and especially the hip, since hips are the source of the power in your feet. Topic number four. Common mistakes about gun in practice. First, confusion between routing and the balance. Like I mentioned previously, that many people in the community misperceive routing to be merely the keeping of a balance. Actually, based on my research and experience, routing and the keeping balance are two different concepts. Routing is more dynamic while keeping balance is static. In other words, merely keeping balance in martial practice does not imply you are rooted. Routing is more about the sinking of energy while keeping balance is about physical stability while maintaining a posture. Second, excessive twisting of the feet. Traditionally, the internal cells has, have a clear rule regarding the twisting movement of the feet on the ground. Of course, there are some movements in some routines where we need to twist one or both feet on the ground. But most of the time, the feet should remain stable on the ground without any twisting movement. The reason is that the power released is executed by the leg and having the feet in a stable position on the ground will strengthen and intensify the power in the legs. If your feet twist on the ground, then the power in the legs will not be sufficient for fighting movement. Keep in mind that I am talking about a general principle of avoiding the twisting of your feet. Yes. There do exist movements that require the twisting of the feet, but there are not too many of those and I am not talking about those here. Third, confusion between powerful stepping and heavy vertical stepping. Another very common mistake is that people misperceive a powerful stepping in fuzzy movements to be an ex exaggerated foot stopping, or in other words, a heavy vertical stepping. I have to remind you that heavy vertical stepping is not considered as the luo di sheng gen. I always tell my students that if you want to release a horizontal power, then vertical heavy stepping will not help it at all. A real powerful stepping conducive to the fuzzy movement is the practice in which stepping follows the direction of the attacking force. For example, if you want to punch forward, then the stepping usually moves forward as well while executing the power 
release. Of course, there are many more mistakes relevant to this topic. I may run out of the tea, but I will never run out of uh, common mistakes. But this, uh, listing all of them is beyond the scope of this video. Instead, let's move on to the next topic where I will show you what good dynamic routing actually look like. Topic 5. Demonstration. Today, I'd like to put two videos today. The, to the first one, I'd like to use the prior video that I shot last year. It is in Chinese but with English subtitle. In traditional practice, the, uh, there is an old expression of the internal self martial art. Landing without the sound, but releasing force with sound. Luo di wu sheng, fa li you sheng. Landing without the sound requires controlling the body at a good level, while punching or pushing or fa jin in Chinese with audible sound requires coordinating different body movements harmoniously. To have sound, you need to root into the ground. Now, let me show you another demonstration which will introduce both incorrect and correct stepping in all the three internal styles. In Tai Chi practice, no matter how we move upward, the upper, upper body, our feet should remain stable. So if you move like, 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 like this, that's a mistake. You should not twist your feet on the ground. So it should be like, you know, to be stable, no matter how we move upper body. In Xing Yi practice, very often we see this kind of stepping. They move like, right, they move. That's not correct because vertical force will not strengthen the horizontal force. That's the taboo. That's against the principle of the Luo Di Sheng Gen. So we should like, right? so, so keep very small space between the feet and the ground and step forward. Focus on the forward force, not this kind of force. In Bagua practice, very often we see people they walk like this. No. No, no, no. It should be like that's the right bagua step walking, following the principle of a luo di sheng gen. Topic six: Takeaways. First, in Chinese culture, the concept of a genben was originally used to describe the structure of a tree. Later, people began to use this term to express qualities such as foundational, original, essential, fundamental, and so on, depending on the context. Second, gen or rooting is a key concept in traditional Chinese martial arts. The pyramidal approach is considered the traditional Chinese aesthetic standard for physical activity. The pyramidal approach is based on the concept and the practice of rooting which is an important guiding principle of Chinese martial arts, especially the internal styles. Third, the concept of a gen or routine involves many principles, a few of which were introduced in this video. Those are first, bu fa qing qie wen, stepping should be light but stable. Second, a stable stance relies on the strength of the leg. Third, Pay attention to the movement involving the shifting of your weight with respect to the energy transfer between your hip, knees, and feet in order to improve your dynamic routine practice. Fourth, I also pointed out some common mistakes in gun practice. Those are first, confusion between 
rooting and the balance. Second, excessive twisting of the feet. Third, confusing between powerful stepping and heavy vertical stepping. I recommend you analyze your own practice with respect to these common mistakes. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.